Welcome to Dobby's Repairs, I'm Dobby the Fixing Elf and in this video I'll show you how to replace the front wheel bearing on a Mark II Ford C-Max. So let's get started. So the first job we need to do is break loose the axle nut while the car is on the ground. So I've took the wheel off once and removed the little plastic cap. And I'm going to break it loose with a breaker bar. This is a 13mm bolt that we need to open. So just loosen off nice and easy, don't need to take it too far. We'll then get loose. Now we're going to quickly tap the car up. And then we're going to remove the wheel nuts, lug nuts, whatever you want to call them. It won't take too long. Quickly whip them all off. We can still have this up to remove the little plastic cover that's on it. And now we're going to quickly get the car jacked up higher and put an actual stand in. It's always really useful to have an actual stand underneath your car to keep yourself safe while you're working on it. It's not going to be under the car, but it's definitely worth having it secured and easily so it's not on the jack. The next step we're going to do is to remove the 218mm caliper bracket bolts this will make our life a lot easier we haven't got to remove the brake uh, caliper or the brake pads we'll just quickly break them loose i'm using a breaker bar and 80 mil here just break them loose once you get them loose you're moving to using a ratchet so that's the top one broken loose we'll now move down to the bottom one just let me adjust the camera for you and giving these a quick brush up will wear a brush to get the worst of the rest of the stuff off. But yeah, this is an 18mm. Okay, quickly slide it on. And break it loose. They can be quite tight, that's why I'm using a breaker bar. Now here I come in with a ratchet now. And we'll break it loose. You can use a spanner as well, but a ratchet is a bit quicker and easier. It'll just work out. I'll sped things up here a bit just so you haven't got to sit for me removing it all completely. But I'll get almost all the way out and then I'll move on back onto the top one. So again these are 18mm. Once you've got a fair way out, you can move on to the top one. You want to keep the bolts in place so it makes it easier so the caliper doesn't wiggle. And we'll go to the top one. Again this is at three times speed, so it should come up fairly quickly. And there we go, get the bolt out. That's the top one out. Now I'll go back down the bottom, get me finish off the last bottom bit. Shouldn't take too long now. The caliper will stay in place on the brake disc of the bar because it will still be held in by the pressure. And that's the second one off. That's the two 80mm caliper bolts out. As you can see the hydraulic pressure from the brake piston is holding the brake caliper on to the brake disc so we're going to get a screwdriver in here and just lever it a bit forward and relieve the pressure this will just compress the piston on the brake caliper just get in there with a screwdriver get a good spot and then you'll see it just compressing nice and easily and there we go as you can see you can press it in fairly easily and that gives us enough gap to get the caliper off and now we're going to hang the caliper up once we remove this little bracket uh, holding it on you don't want to damage the cables or anything, you should always make sure you hang your calipers up, it just protects your brake line and the caliper itself from any damage while you're working on other parts. But yeah, it's hooked up nice and safely now. Let's move on to removing the brake disc now. So I'm going to start by removing the 13mm axle nut that we broke loose earlier, axle bolt should I say. Just quickly whip it out, get it out. It's a fairly long one, you can't reuse these either because they are quite prone to snapping. Just quickly wheel it out. You can see there'll be a lot of time on there. Now we're going to remove the brake disc itself. They can be seized quite hard on here. I'm going to try and push the axle out. Make sure that moves. It does move a bit. You can't see it in this footage, but it does move. Let's start off by remove, getting this brake disc now. So as you can see, I'm going to give it, try and give it a good wiggle. Get it loose. But it's not going to move. It's quite firm. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to get a bit of WD-40. Just spray around the um, studs. Then we're going to clean this all, all off with brake clean afterwards so you don't worry about the oil getting on the brake disc. And then I'm going to get the rubber hammer out and I'm going to give it a good whack. And just keep moving it around and whacking it with the rubber hammer. You can also use a metal hammer but just be careful you don't hit the face of the brake disc. And yeah, just keep working around and whacking it. Eventually, 
after a bit of persuasion and a bit more whacking it will pop loose and come off there's our wheel bearing here and the actual hub now let's move on to removing the bottom ball joint I'm going to give it a quick spray with some penetrating oil a DP60 if you wonder what I use and I'm going to break it loose using a ratchet in wrench you really should use a standard wrench for this but I use a ratchet one because it's just a bit quicker and easier and it seems to stand up to the abuse quite well and then we can work it out with this ratcheting wrench it's a 21mm by the way so yeah just work it out if yours does start to spin you can put a 6mm bit in the top and hold it with a pair of vice grips or a quarter inch spanner and then just work this out until it comes off and it's eventually pop it, come out a bit more WD-40 or penetrating or DP-60 in my case. And yeah, we just work it out nice and simply. And it comes off. And once we get it off, all will be good. So now we're going to move on to removing the ball joint completely. I'm going to be using this ball joint tool here. You can also hit it with a hammer. I've never had much luck with that method. I find this tool really handy for breaking off loose ball joints, so all we need to do is just work it loose, there's a 90mm fastener on there I've done a watch in my toolbox on this tool as well, I'll try and link it in the description so you can have a look at it and yeah, just work it around and you'll hear it pop nice and easily, or well, you won't hear it in this video but it does pop nice and satisfactory when the ball joint pops loose and when I break, when it pops loose, the camera gets knocked over but it is now loose and yeah, we'll move the camera slightly and get you a better angle. So I'm going to use my breaker bar here as a little lever to finish levering, levering out the ball joint. As you can see it's moving nicely now, it's been broken loose. And just a bit of pressure and a bit of a downward force and you'll get it nice and loose. There we are. And then we'll just quickly grab both hands and get it out of the way. Yeah, we just want to move the steering knuckle out of the way so the ball joint doesn't attach it on the way back up. And now I'm going to use the breaker bar again in just a moment. The back end of it now, just to quickly push through and push the CV axle out of the way. And there we are, that comes out. And we've got the CV axle nice and safely out of the way. And this is on the driver's side so we don't need to support the axle while we're doing any work. So you've got a little thrust bearing in the middle there. And that's the CV axle out now. Just going to pop the ball joint back in to give us a nice secure area where we remove this wheel bearing. Just pop it back into the steering knuckle and it makes things nice and easy. So here's the tool I'll be using to remove the wheel bearing and install the new one. I'll do a full what's in my toolbox on this tool very shortly so keep an eye out for that. We include in full instructions on how to set it up. But as you can see it makes short work of this. So I'm using a breaker bar just to remove the old one. It can be quite tough and quite rusted. As you can see, they come up fairly easy once you get past that first initial piece of rust. And yeah, just work it out nice and simply. Again, this tool is a great tool for the job. It really makes it nice and easy. Now I switch over to a hand ratchet just to get the rest of the way out. Once you get to the end, it will fall out, so you need to be careful and ready for that. It took me a bit by surprise. Now we're going to quickly clear out any rust out of the steering knuckle and the cavity where the wheel bearing sits. You can see it's quite rusty. I'm going to use my Dremel with a wire brush attachment. Be careful not to damage the ABS sensor. With this tool you don't have to remove the ABS sensor. Which makes it nice and easy. And less hassle. Because sometimes it, these ABS sensors can break off. But yeah. Or just get stuck or the screw can round off. There's lots of different things. So you can see with the wire brush I'm just giving it a good old clean. Getting all this rust out of the way. And now I'm going to use a bit more sandpaper now just to finish it, things off. Yeah, give it a good old brush down and rub down, get all the rust but only high spots. And yeah, pretty simple really. Just give it a good sand. And yeah, once we keep going until we make till you're happy with it. And then give it a final spray down with some brake cleaning in just a moment. Just to get it all um nice and clean and shiny. I do use quite a bit of brake clean here, but it's definitely well worth it. Makes it the installation process a lot easier. Now we're going to reinstall the new wheel bearing, so I've set up the tool for in the installing mode and we'll get everything lined up and get all the bolts on and everything. Again, this is quite a good tool. I have full detail on how to set up. 
in the watch in my toolbox coming soon. So yeah, get it all lined up and make quick work of reinstalling this bearing. Once we get everything set up. So that's the spanner in place. Now we can start tightening everything in and it will just slide in nice and easily. It doesn't take too long really, as you can see it just goes in nice and easily. It will self centre itself as well to make it nice and lined up so we don't got to worry, we just have to work the tool down, which is pretty good. And we don't have risk damaging any of the bearings or the anything like that for this tool, so pretty good. And yeah, once it's in, just keep working it down until we're happy that it's deep enough. Once you get to the end of it, you'll notice that it will stop. It'll be really hard to move, like that. And that's pretty much it done. So now we can remove the tool. And now the tool is removed, we can go spin the bearing, make sure everything spins freely as it should. And now we get back on to reinstalling everything that we've taken off. So the first one we'll put back in is the CV axle in just a moment. So we're going to push the um, board out of the way. Just to give us enough room to swing the CV axle in. Again, this is a fairly simple process. All we need to do is just get it up. Line it up with the splines. Sometimes you find the splines need to be twisted a bit, but it can be a bit hard to get in. But yeah, just make sure you line it all up. And that makes it nice and simple. Again, you can put a bit of anti seize on the um, splines. I don't think it's really necessary, but some people like to do it. Now we'll put the ball joint back in for the last time. And yeah, once that's in, we'll make sure everything's secure. Now we're going to reinstall the ball joint nut. As you can see, I'm using a pair of vice grips and a 6mm screwdriver bit because my ball joint started spinning when I was putting it back on. So using the ratcheting thing is this the easiest way I found to do it. You can also use a quarter inch spanner, that works really well. Yeah, we can tighten everything down. Yeah, just get it down nice and tight. Again, this is a really good tip if your ball joints are spinning. You use a, use a screwdriver bit that fits and a vice grip or a quarter inch spanner. And we're just going to finish tightening everything down. Just get it nice and tight. Again, we need 21mm spanner. Works really well. Once everything is nice and tight, we can put some copper grease onto the wheel bearing. This will just make it easier to remove the brake disc later down the line. Just give a, bit, give a good generous helping of copper grease. And yeah, just rub it everywhere that we need to. You may notice that the axle nut's in. Don't worry about that at the moment. Now I'm going to put the brake disc on. So I'll just slide on nicely. And then we're going to put on the brake caliper next. So just change the angles, give it a good clean with some brake clean before we put the brake caliper on. And yeah, next we need to get the um, brake caliper down and get it roughly in position. So I'm just unhooking it now and we'll pop it onto the brake disc. And now we're going to get these two 80mm tightened back in. Just get them started, make sure you line them all up. Get the top one in, then put the bottom one in. And then once they're both in, we can tighten them down. But it's always good to get them both started before you tighten them down. Make sure you tighten them all by hand as well so you don't cross thread. That's another good tip. And yeah, just turn the steering wheel a bit, just to make it a bit easier. To give me easier access. And now we're going to use the 18mm again. And just tighten them nice down, nice and easily. And yeah, just quickly whip them down. Make sure we get them nice and tight, nice and secure. As we want, we don't want a caliper coming off. I've also reapplied some Loctite to both of them. And yeah, that's the top one done. Just finish off the bottom one, make sure it's nice and tight, and I think I'm loose at all. Yeah, and that's in now. And then we're going to put the little rubber stopper back at the top there, make sure it's in place. Also make sure we haven't twisted our cable or anything. It's really hard to do with the caliper on, but some people can. And yeah, now we're going to put the new axle nut in. You may have noticed the old one was in, but that was just a placeholder, just to hold everything secure. Now we're going to put the new one in, and just tighten it down by hand first. Get as tight as we can by hand. And once it's nice and tight, we can move on to the next step, which is putting the wheel back on. So once the wheel is back on, we'll put all the lug nuts back in. Obviously we'll fully tighten these down once it's on the ground. 
to the right torque spec. We can quickly run it down now. Once it's on the ground, we'll just drop it down, as you can see here. So it's going to be coming down in any moment. Make sure you take the actual stand out, but now it's down. We can torque it down. So here comes the torque wrench set to 45 newton meters in any moment now. There we are. And we'll just tighten it nice and easily. It's easier when it's on the ground. And a nice, good, satisfying click. Just here. And once that's done, we just need to put the torque angle on it. Now it requires a 90 degree torque angle. So just put, use your torque angle gauge or mark the bolt and twist it round until it's facing the 3 o'clock position. But this angle gauge works really well for me. You can't really see it here because my hand's in the way, but it does reach the 90 degree torque angle that we require. And that's how you change the front wheel bearing on a Mark II Ford C-Max. Thanks for watching. Hopefully you found this video helpful. If you did, drop a like and subscribe if you're new. If you enjoyed this video, why not drop a like? Any questions or feedback, let me know in the comments. I normally drop two videos a week, so if you haven't subbed to the channel yet, you should and then you'll never miss another video. Do you know anyone else who would enjoy watching this video? Then feel free to share it with them. Thanks for watching until the end. Have a sensational day.